This module will provide you with an introduction to some of the equipment used in a fall protection system, including manufacturer's information on how to inspect it. Before using any type of fall protection, it's vital to inspect all components of your system. We start with the anchoring point. When considering anchoring points, it's important to understand that you can't gauge whether one is strong enough just by pulling on it. Because there are significant forces exerted during a fall, attempt to identify anchorages with at least a 16 kilonewton or 3600 pound minimum breaking strength. For a temporary anchor in a travel restraint situation, the minimum breaking strength is 3.5 kilonewtons or 800 pounds. It's your responsibility to determine whether any anchor appears unquestionably strong before using it for a fall protection system. It should be free of any damage and securely fastened. If the anchor appears questionable to a competent worker, it must not be used. Now to the full body harness, the only body holding device suitable for personal fall arrest. The full body harness is designed to securely hold the worker and distribute the forces of a fall should one occur. The harness is also designed to keep the body in an upright or nearly upright position until the person is rescued. There are five groups of body harnesses on the market. Group A, fall arresting. Group D, controlled descent. Group E, confined space entry and exit. Group L, ladder climbing. Group P, work positioning. We will show you how to inspect an AELP body harness. In completing my harness inspection, I have a harness inspection checklist that I can work off of and it gives me a priority rating as well of each component of the harness. So I don't have to guess as to what priority rating those things need to be. So I'm going to check the D-ring first. So any metal components, we're looking for cracks, corrosion, pitting, and rust. So I'm take a good thorough look of the D-ring. I don't see any cracked, corrosion, rust, pitting, um, burrs, cracks. I'm going to take a really good look at all of the webbing, all of the stitching. The labels need to have the correct information, the information associated with the CSA as well, our inspection label. We're going to ensure that our fall arresters have not been deployed, that they're still intact. We're going to check the stitching on our webbing as well to make sure that it is in good shape and continue feeding the webbing. If your harness or your equipment looks like it is in good shape, it uh, doesn't look like there's any metal fibers or wood fibers that are inside. We can then take our gloves off if it looks like it's physically in good shape. We can take our gloves off. Sometimes there may be something that's built on the material that maybe we can't see it. Sometimes we can't see it, but then sometimes we can feel it. It might be a little bit harder in that area. The material is just not going to feel the same. So once again, looking at all of our hardware, making sure it's in good shape, stitching, Easiest to hang the harness up, that way it's hanging directly down and we can have a good look at our harness. If we have a bayonet style, which is uh, actually snaps into itself, we want to make sure that that's actually working, it's not going to come loose. Try it a couple times. Once again, checking our keepers, checking our stitching and our webbing. And this all looks like it's in pretty good shape. One part that tends to get missed often is this strap right here. If we flip it over this type of harness, we can't really see back there. We can feel back there, but there's a plastic piece on it that we can no longer see this one strap. It gets hidden behind the other strap. So we need to be able to peel that somewhat backwards, take a look inside there, and make sure that there's no damage to this one piece of webbing that we can no longer see. So as I'm doing my inspection, I would be going through and marking off, is this a pass, is it a fail? and make notes as to why maybe that, that harness or that piece of equipment doesn't quite pass the inspection. So make notes on it, keep it as a log, 
Inspection is part of a scheduled documented inspection process, which is also required by occupational health and safety. So this harness looks good to me. I would be comfortable and happy putting myself and trusting this uh, harness with my life. Now the proper procedure to don this full body harness. What is common practice for all harnesses is that the worker should empty his or her pockets and fully read the manufacturer's instructions. If the harness belongs to or has been assigned to a worker, he or she should print his or her name only in the space provided. How to don an AELP body harness. After inspecting my harness, I'm going to don my harness and then I'm going to check for correct fitting and make alterations if needed. This is a vest style harness, so we're going to put it on similar to a jacket. Any hair or hoods, hoodies should be pulled out from underneath your harness. Once it feels like it's somewhat in a comfortable position, we're going to check the sub pelvic strap and make sure that it is underneath, not uh, up on the back. Sub pelvic strap needs to be underneath the buttocks. So I'm going to check my leg straps. Leg straps should be tight enough that I can only stick my hand up to here. So obviously this is too loose. Sometimes it's easier, instead of trying to adjust the leg strap while it's already on, to actually undo it. I know it probably needs to be a little bit tighter. The keepers, when there's two keepers on one strap, the keeper needs to go one to each end to prevent the straps from excess straps floating around and potentially causing a hazard. Now that leg strap is much better, so I can tell what distance the next one needs to be. Okay, so we have keepers to both ends. Now once that's sitting reasonably well, your sub-pelvic strap is still in the right place. You can do your chest strap. If I can pull these shoulder straps off of my shoulders, that means that the chest strap is either not high enough or it's not tight enough, one or the other. On this harness, this is simply a tool belt. It's an extra, it's an add-on. It does not affect the performance of your harness. So whatever is comfortable with the belt, as long as the main components of the harness are adjusted correctly. So mid-torso height, about a few inches from underneath the armpit is where the chest strap should be sitting. The chest strap is too low. We have the possibility of falling out of the harness forwards when we have a fall. The chest strap is too high. We have a possibility of being choked while we're hanging waiting for rescue. So leg straps, we're in a good spot in the leg straps, chest strap, mid, mid of the chest area. Strap is underneath and everything is fitted nicely. Now to the connectors. Connectors are all the components between the harness and the anchoring point, including the lanyard. Lanyards are made from a variety of materials, such as rope, nylon or polyester web, or steel cable, depending on the work environment. Web lanyards are lightweight, easy to inspect, 
and long-lasting. The wire rope lanyard is more appropriate for situations where there are welding or cutting activities, which might cut, burn, or melt other types of lanyards. A lanyard used for fall arrest should always be equipped with a shock absorber. This device tears or stretches to absorb the energy of a fall if one should occur, reducing the chance of injury. The E4 shock absorber can add 1.1 meters or 3.5 feet to the length of the lanyard in the event of a fall and must be taken into consideration when calculating clearance distances. Self-retracting lifelines, function and fall arrest systems, while also providing a tether for workers working at height. It has a housing containing a drum-wound lifeline, which functions like a seat belt. A vertical lifeline is a line or cable attached to an anchor point at one end. If the worker traveling along it falls, the fall arrester will lock off and stop the fall. Horizontal lifelines are connected at the anchors on each end and possibly at intermittent locations. This allows the worker freedom of movement with fall arrest capability. The horizontal lifelines are engineered systems that fit a variety of circumstances. Snap hooks and carabiners, like lanyards, are connectors in a fall arrest system. They must meet accepted standards and be marked as such, including a minimum strength of 16 kilonewtons, or 3,600 pounds. They must have self-closing and self-locking mechanisms, which can only be opened by at least two consecutive and deliberate manual actions. This is vital because of the way they are connected. One other very important point to illustrate in this section. Use the buddy system to attach the lanyard to your harness and to verify that it's connected correctly. Trying to do it yourself behind your back leaves open the possibility of a false connection. Hal has work to do this afternoon and he'll need a fall protection plan to do it safely. <laughs>